All right, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Cassini here at Slam Internet Radio. It is Wednesday, February 19th, 2014, and we have a star-studded show for everyone tonight. Um, in the studio with us from his own band, Semple, and also the lead singer of Seventh Heaven, we have Mr. Keith Semple in the audience, in the, in the, in the studio, not in the audience, Greetings, in the studio. Both, both you know. I'm, <laughs> I'm rusted. Sorry, I don't even know. So anyway, I'm so nervous to have Keith Semple here. He's a, a well-known um, artist and musician and uh, just got off playing a major tour over in, the, over in the U.K. in front of thousands of people, literally thousands of people. And uh, I want to say hi to everybody that's listening. And we got a lot of new people listening tonight because of Keith. And uh, Keith, we know it's a big deal for you to be here, man. I know that you uh, drove all the way in from way the hell out in the super burbs there. So we appreciate you coming in, man. It's my pleasure. My and, pleasure. Uh, and uh, and all the all the new people that are listening uh, that are Keith's fans, thank you for, for tuning in and uh, giving us a chance here. This is Matt Cassain, like I said once before. And you're listening to Slam Internet Radio. And um, we're going to start off with... Well, this is going great. <laughs> <laughs> I just this is the going rest great. is going to be awesome. Oh man, <laughs> can only go uphill. From Keith, there. I can tell you're very you're very impressed with our technology here at Slam Internet Radio, and uh, no one saw me do it. They came from nothing. Skip Parker, Skip Parker, Skip. You're talking to a Northern Irishman here. I, I <laughs> you'll have to explain who these guys are for me. <laughs> he's with I the, like them already. He's with the Cubs. Right. He's with the Cubs. Oh ah. wow. Oh man, yep. you know, you know, uh, uh, Skip. We have um, we have a, uh, a, a lovely uh, guy here uh, from from Ireland, uh, Keith Semples, in, in the uh, in the in the booth with me right now in the studio, and uh, doesn't know much about Chicago baseball and how we've suffered for qu- close to a century now. Uh, is there is there any words of wisdom that you can give somebody who just moved here to America about the Chicago Cubs? Yeah, I mean, you can never really count on it getting better. <laughs> <laughs> You can't say, like, next year will be great, because chances are, if this year uh, sucked, so to speak, chances are, next year will kind of, too. It sounds you don't like, go from zero to, to ten in, you know, overnight. Yeah, it sounds, like, it sounds like if you do the maths, though, you know, and you said it's getting, like, six games better, so just maybe in, like, what? 13 more years, they'll actually not lose a game, right? That, that might be 13, and to be it. honest, it could also be 113, as we've learned. Well, it's already been 100 and something, right? Or should yeah. I even bring that up, should I? That's okay. Oh, it's fine. We all, everybody, we all, everybody knows the math, I tell you. We, yeah. all, you know, the, we all get the together. They're one of the two most popular uh, last place teams, the, the Jamaican bobsled team and the Chicago Cubs. You know, everybody loves them. We all run in. We all we all get together. And it's a communal suffering. That's what I like to call it. It's a communal yep. suffering. But um, we have Part T here. We have uh, Keith Semple and Keith. You got a new record out. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, I'm very excited. Yeah, it's been like pretty much 16 years in the making, really. Um, yeah, it's called Not for Radio. I'm hoping that's you know that's not an, not for radio. Yeah, I'm hoping that's an irony. <laughs> <laughs> now hold on a second. Now, Danny, did we find any of his songs yet, or is that not happening? Yeah, I got him. Okay, which one? Which one do you want to play? Uh, yeah, I think there's one on that SoundCloud. There, you can play off the new album. It's called "You're Crazy." It's not about me, I swear. You better run for cover before you get discovered. You're going down so easy. So come on up and see me. This is your official.
listening, you guys. I think we have some new people out there. And Keith will be back in a few seconds, but we just wanted to let you know where you could find out more about his music. Uh, that's from SempleMusic.com, and it's S-E-M-P-L-E, SempleMusic.com. And Keith is a, a wonderful musician. I got to work with him on New Year's Eve at the uh, Hyatt Regency with his band, Seventh Heaven. He's got his own band now, just uh, simply called Semple. And uh, he's going to be playing tomorrow night at the Rivers Casino out there on his planes. If anybody wants to go check out Seventh Heaven. Yeah. Oh, really? Hello, Matt Cassane back here at Slam Internet Radio. We're live. Uh, it is uh, about 6.45 almost, and uh, we have uh, Keith Semple, ladies and gentlemen. L- people listening all over the world, I just found out in England, people don't understand a word I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that, at least uh, you know it's the other way around normally, because people here are going, what the hell is this guy saying? So it's fair. Well, I can you understand know? you perfect. <laughs> you've been in America for how long now, Keith? Uh, I've been here seven and a half years, I think, so it's. It, I don't think I've lost any of the accent, but certainly I've learned the right things to say at the right time, at least. Okay, you know? yeah. <laughs> now, I, now, I know when you go to Ireland, most people that go there, a guy like myself, probably couldn't understand a damn thing most of the people there were saying, correct? Yes, that's Cause they Because they talk fast. Can you, lay a, can you lay a little of the traditional Irish? Can you, can, you talk, can you talk like that anymore, where you just like uh, talk so fast? Yeah, you got to do some Belfast. You know, Belfast's the place where, like, yeah, you know, it's like Belfast Lake. You know, I talk about there. Lake can't understand a word of saying if we talk fast, Lake. <laughs> That's right. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think you'd need to be there for at least like a year before you'd be able to, you know, be in a bar with some drink and I'd still understand what anybody's saying. Do, <laughs> do you do you have you found a favorite uh, drinking spot here in Chicago that you that you like to go? Do you drink? I should ask. You know, what? I do, but I have no time because I'm always playing. So any night that everybody else would be out. You know, I'm always out being the one performing, and I sure. like I like it that way. That's good, and, and it's probably not good for your chords either, right? Your vocal chords and all that. You know what? It's definitely not, but it's one of those things where it's like a double-edged sword. You know, where like if you've been singing five nights in a row, the sixth night you're gonna have a couple of beers just so that you can you know numb your chords to get through the final one. You know, but you don't want to be drinking on a Tuesday if you're singing on a Saturday. You and I and I you know I got to thank you for saying hi to my wife. She loves you guys. And uh, she goes to uh, Rivers Casino every once in a while <clears throat> with her friends, and uh, and uh, and her and her boss loves you too. So I wanted to let you uh, know that you've got fans very close to to me. And uh, so anyway, you, you guys are great. Uh, like I said, uh, we're here with uh, Keith Semple from uh, Seventh Heaven, and also his own band now, just simply called Semple. Yep. And uh, it's S E M P L E, and uh, you, you're, you've been honored. We, we were honored right now, and you've been gracious enough to uh, uh, do an in studio uh, selection from your new album. What's your new album called? Yeah, uh, album's called Not for Radio. Um, it's a long story, but um, I want to do the actual title track, which is also called Not for Radio. Okay, so. well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, going live right now here at Slam Internet Radio Studios in Chicago. Here is the great Keith Semple. All right. Guess it's my way of getting through to you I dreamed of ways to say I'm sorry for what I do It should have been easy to tell you what I mean It's been a long time coming, baby, but now you know I've seen the light You know I've seen the light Won't give up without a fight This song is not for radio it's just for you I don't care who likes the words And I don't care who likes the tune After all is said And all is done I don't care about success Or if I get to number one It's not for radio Our lives are changing I think that's what went wrong I thought you'd never catch me out Should've known all along I didn't love her I didn't even care I don't know what came over but I know it wasn't fair on you You know I feel like such a fool I feel like such a fool, yeah This song is not for radio It's just for you I don't care who likes the words And I don't care who likes the tune After all is said And all is done I don't care about success Or if I get to number one It's not for radio It's just for you I don't care who likes the words And I don't care who likes the tune There is just one thing I needed to say 
And even if it's over and you send me away, it's not for radio. Hey! You know the song is not for radio. It's just for you. I don't care who likes the words and I don't care who likes the tune After all is said and all is done I don't care about success or if I get to number one It's not for radio, it's just for you I don't care who likes the words and I don't care who likes the tune There was just one thing I needed to say Holy right. shit. Awesome. Fantastic. Holy shit. What uh, the hell, dude? <laughs> Why isn't that like on the radio? I'm not being, in a, I'm not, no pun intended. Because <laughs> it's called not for radio, I guess. Right? Yeah, but that's, just, <laughs> that's a fucking single right there. I'm hoping so, man. I, I, you know, we got to tell the world, you know? Yes, we must. It's a must. We got to spread the word, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, like, I like that song a lot and it's always meant a lot to me. So I'm hoping that people will feel the same way, you know? Um, got me warmed up now. You got to take off a I like layer. It. Yeah, I mean, dude, I'm, you know, I saw you play with the band, and you guys are great. Seventh Heaven is an awesome band, and thank you so much for letting me totally just ruin your show. <laughs> go up there. He let me go up there and do Chris Farley um, on New Year's Eve and warm up the crowd for him, and then do the countdown. And uh, to this day, it's one of the honest to God, it's one of the thrills of my life. I had such a great time doing that. It was awesome. And man. you guys have such great fans. They, they should have and had every, every right to boo me and pelt me and, and throw beer cans at me while I was on stage, and they were so receptive and nice to me. Uh, but, uh, again, thank you for letting me do that on New Year's Eve. Uh, but, um, okay, let, let's talk a little bit about your experience. Um, I know you've done both British Idol, which is the version, the, the English version of American Idol, and then uh, you came over here to the States a few years later, and then you did American Idol. Um, and do you, I mean, do you want to just talk about your experiences with, with both those shows or? Yeah. I mean, they're both very, very different in the sense that, um, actually it's kind of funny cause I got asked to do the shows by, like, it was never my idea both times, you know, like okay. my, my granny was sitting watching the shows like she does, you know, in her, she was, um, mid seventies at the time. And she's like, oh, Keith, you got to go on this show. It's where you go on and sing and there's judges. And I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. You know, it's like, don't know if that's for me. And then um, she just said, like, well, I'm going to enter you for it. So, you know, a few weeks later, I got a call and they were like, we want you to come over to Glasgow and do the interviews and stuff. And I'm like, uh, OK, uh, sure. And then it was like that the whole time. Like, you know, there's all the stages you keep going through. You get voted in, voted yeah. in, voted in. Well, I just kept on getting through. And I, I genuinely thought I am not right for this. You know, I had a shaved head at the time and I just, you know, I was playing my guitar. I was a rocker and I just didn't fit in at all. They would ask me to dance, and I just was like, "Seriously?" They would ask you to dance. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was all it was all it was all very boy band, you know. Sort oh, of that oriented, kind of dancing, that kind okay. of dancing. And it's it just wasn't for me, you know. No, I I did, after listening to you, you have thank God you did not thank God you weren't in a boy band because I'll tell you, <laughs> you have way too much fucking talent to be in a in a boy band. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know that you know they make a ton of money and they're you know all that shit. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's exact. It's not that I felt I had too much talent or anything. It's just that I felt like you know I wanted to be the one that was writing the songs and help you know and being part of it. I think if we could have done that, we would still be here today. You know, we would have been doing really well. Sure, it's just not the way the Rick or company world. Did they works, actually you know? come up with a name for a boy band for you? Or? Oh no, yeah. I mean, it's a long story. I'll tell you about it over a drink at some time. But you don't yeah. want to talk about that uh, now. Okay. <laughs> but we um, we we did well for about you know a year or so. Well, now was that was that what you were doing last week or two weeks ago? I saw you were you were performing at an arena. It looked like the size of Madison Square Garden. Um, it was nothing to do with that, but it was something that I've done. Uh, it was my 10th year anniversary actually doing it. It's a thing called Young Voices, and I hope that they're trying to bring it over to America, and I hope that they do because it's it's unique. It's one, only happens in, in, in Britain at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's a choir of kids from the local area schools, right? Okay. And they come to the big arenas. So say they all stay it here, okay. and they would sing behind the stage, and they learn all the songs in the winter uh, semester of school okay and then they come and they sing behind the performers okay it's the most amazing thing like you know i was singing my song there not for radio and there was eight thousand kids 
behind, mic'd up, not all obviously individually, but you know, uh, group mics. Yeah, uh, singing the words because they yeah. learned it all in that in their in their schools, and they pay to take part, obviously, and that's and that and it's holy shit. So well, that was the O2 in London, which is the biggest arena in the now, whole of Europe. So. Now, you, when you go back to the UK, I mean, do you uh, do you get recognized still, or is that like? Yeah. Um, do you look different? Um, a lot more different now than you did back then, or? You know what? I, I'm one of those people that don't seem to like change at all. Everybody's always saying okay. like you look the same and stuff. I guess yeah. the hair changes over time. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, it either gets higher. I think it gets higher. Yes. Well, now, um, well, you know, my I, I I get a lot of people saying that I I just got fatter. That's all they say. Oh, you look the same, but you're you're a lot you're a lot fatter. That's what they say to me. <laughs> I don't um, know. I don't know you before, so no comment. Oh. <laughs> Uh, the donuts. The donuts. Oh, no, we discussed this. Every, it, everybody looks. It's the donuts. See, now I think if I move to the UK, because I don't know if it's true, but I mean, I mean, you probably enjoy the food there, but I've heard the food there to Americans is not very good. You know, I've heard that too. But then my band came over with me to London, and they just couldn't believe the quality of the food. But then again, it was the catering company that runs, you know, and uh, the, the, these big arenas, and obviously, mm-hmm. like it's a top class okay. place. So they were getting this most amazing stuff and they were like okay this is probably not representative of the whole country have you know? have you, have you found uh, places here in the chicagoland area that uh have decent food that uh would be comparable to the stuff in england and ireland yeah uh, for sure i think american in ge- america in general does some things a lot better okay and some things not so good like um dairy products not quite not quite so good yeah but but meat products think they're way better. I mean, Amer- you can't get a better steak than in a good American steak joint okay. or a burger too. Because in, in in Britain, they tend to overdo the meat. Yeah, you right. You know, and you can't really, if you ask for a medium rare burger, they'd look at you like, you know, they'd still just, you know, basically like, crucif- you know, crucify it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bur- <clears throat> it's now, like, uh, cremate it is the word I was looking for. Now, when you did the, uh, you came here in, in um, you came here about how, how long ago did you come to America? Uh, almost eight years ago, seven and a half years, I think. Okay, and then you signed up for uh, America's uh, Got Talent. No, wait, American... American Idol. I American Idol, right. Okay. Same story for that. Again, I went on that because a friend of mine was like, I don't care if you don't want to go on it. Just yeah. go. Yeah. And the same thing happened again. I got through, I got through, I got through. Mm-hmm. And then what happened was uh, they called me up one day as I'm... It, 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 like you know on my way to LA yeah and they're like um we're really sorry but you can't continue the show and right. I'm like why and they're like because your permanent resident card thing doesn't come through yeah. until after the the time it would have to come through to make you le- eligible for the show I saw that video that you have or well, somebody put it on YouTube with Bill Zwecker from channel 32 from, yeah, from yeah. Fox talking about that and um man I I you must have been so disappointed. I mean, you know what? I, it was actually, it was for me. It's a double edged thing because remember, I've been through it all before. Yeah. So to me, it was like almost like a well, you know, done it, been there, done it. You do, you, do you remember that season? Do you remember who the the finalist or the winner was from that year? Uh, yeah, uh, it was the local guy. It was Lee Lee DeWise, you know, from from Chicago area. I, I haven't watched that show. I'm ser- seriously, the last time I watched um, American Idol was Dor- Daughtry. Mm-hmm. Was when Daughtry was on. That was the last season I watched. Yeah. Well, in my in my opinion, the best singer to ever come off one of those shows uh-huh. ever anywhere in the world was Adam Lambert. In my opinion. Okay. I think. Okay. I mean, just from a from a singer to another singer, he sure. was vocally the best. I mean, okay. wh- when I heard that he was going to maybe take over as Queen's lead singer and do a mm-hmm. few albums with them, I was like, if that should happen, because I'm a big Queen fan, and I yeah. was like. Somebody needs to be that good, like so good that they can't even argue how good they are, right? Yeah. Uh, to take that spot. And um, and I don't think it ever worked out for whatever reason, but I really had a lot of respect for that guy. That's cool. Now, when you were growing up, you just said you like Queen. Who were, your, some, who were some of your other influences, like your favorite bands when you were a kid? Uh, I was, I've been a big Sting fan for a you long don't, you time. You don't happen to like the Rolling Stones by any chance, do you? <laughs> yeah, I've got the T-shirt <laughs> on, right? I uh, nah. let's say I like the Stones, uh, the vibe of the Stones. Not, okay, not more than I like the music itself. You okay, know? sure. I was more of a Beatles guy. Yeah, but I liked the attitude of the Stones. You know, oh, I yeah. liked how rock and roll they were and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. But um, they were the bad boys. They were, yeah. And 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 I'm kind of like the 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 good good boy of rock. So I, okay. I kind of I like to 
you know, you know grass is always greener, right? I can see that. You yeah. Know? Sure. But yeah, no, I liked Sting. I liked a British okay. band called Thunder. They were really good. They um, Thunder. Okay. They were just kind. Of, I mean, a lot of really famous singers always said they thought he was one of the best rock singers. Were, were in they the world. sort of like an English version of hair bands, kind of? Yes, they kind of had a more of an ACDC raw vibe to them. Okay. You know, the guy's okay. voice was just phenomenal. Do you remember Crocus? You remember a band called Crocus? They, yeah. they sounded like ACDC. That's why I was asking. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you probably—I don't know how old. How may I ask? How I mean, does it matter? Would you want to uh, say? No, how it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I'm 32 right now. Yeah. That's I mean, when Crocus came out. So I, you, were, you were a baby. <laughs> I remember Crocus in high school, and they sounded just like ACDC. And they played them on the local stations here in Chicago, on the Loop especially. And uh, at first, everybody thought it was just a new ACDC song because they sounded exactly. Right, like ACDC, Crocus. But anyway, um, so uh, so you're a big Beatles guy. Now, do you do any covers acoustically? Can you, I know everybody always wants yeah. to hear, uh, you know, a, a really good acoustic version of something. What, like, I know you were playing a little bit of McCartney before during the break. Yeah, I mean, people always want me to do either Brian Adams or Bon Jovi, simply because my voice is kind of lends itself to that, you know. Okay. And, and um, wait a minute. Now, you guys opened for Bon Jovi. We did, yeah. We opened. We at Soldier's at, Field. At Soldier Field, Kid Rock and... and now, bon how Jovi. the hell did you guys get that? Did you Was it a, was it a contest or... I, yeah, I mean, it's all down to the fans. They yeah. It was a voting thing. And okay. There was, I think there was close to a thousand bands or something. I'm not sure the exact numbers, but there was close and they uh, they just voted and voted and voted. It came down yeah. to us and another local band and, um, you know, right up to the wire and we got to do it. So, we... Um, now yeah, this is this is Seventh Heaven we're talking about. This is Seventh Heaven, yeah. Now, that, that's that's how I remember uh, first hearing about you guys. What, what year was that? Two thousand eight, two thousand nine. That was ten actually. It was two thousand two thousand ten. Okay, yeah. I just remember hearing about this band from Chicago that got to open up for Bon Jovi, and that's when I really started hearing about a lot about Seventh Heaven. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we um, we had things just seemed to fit into place in those couple of years where everything was kind of falling. Oh, you guys are still great. What are you talking about? You guys yeah. are still doing great stuff. Yeah, no. I mean, I just mean from a sort of like a. a What's the word? A momentum standpoint, you know. Yeah, things you guys are just, really like rolling yeah, at that point. One thing after another, and everything just landed in place. I mean, also because we worked very hard. I mean, that's um, you know one of the reasons why I've, I have my own band now is just that I I, I just I'm, I don't think I'm able to do. Not that I'm not able to. It's just that you get to the point where you're not willing to do seven shows a week. You know. And, sure. And, uh, I just didn't want it to be the Joe Cocker experience every night, you know, where my voice is just like, yeah. like I, I feel like I'm going to get up there and it's going to be terrible every night, okay. you know. And, um, but, yeah, I mean, it was absolutely amazing memories. Like, I'm never going to forget doing, like, we, do, we, you know, we've many, many weekends in the summer or we, weeks in the summer, we did, like, 14 shows in 10 days and okay. things like that. Some of them would even be, like, you know, Ohio and Indiana and stuff, and we'd be, like, traveling from one to the other and not even getting any sleep and stuff. So... It was rock and roll, but it was, it, you know, you, you can do it for so long, and then you sure. want to structure it a little better, <laughs> you know? Right. Well, well, I'll tell you what. All right. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a breaky-poo, and uh, Danny, do we have another one of those uh, Keith Simple songs ready to go? Yeah, which one? Which one, uh, Keith? What do you, which we put on? I think I put this letter up. Yes. Um, you might need some tissues for that, though. It's a little bit uh, morbid. It's a little bit sad. It's a little yeah, sad, okay. But it's a great song. And then coming up after this next song by Keith Semple, folks, we have Ken Mills, the host of The Podkist. Are you guys KISS fans? For sure. Are yes. Yeah. Who isn't? Okay. <laughs> we're going to be having, uh, we're going to be talking KISS, uh, 40th anniversary this week of their very first album coming out in 1974, wow. February 1974. We're going to talk about how the album totally bombed, did not sell any, I mean, it sold a few thousand copies, but we're going to be talking to Ken. So Ken, if you're listening, I think he's on the phone right now. We're going to take a little bit of a break and uh, play some music by Keith, and we'll be oh, right back after this. Matt Cassane at Slam Internet Radio. Stick around folks I slip into desperation and sorrow once more when I think Walk through the door since you've been gone. I've had so much to say, so I sit 
and write you this letter, hoping pain away. And it's so hard to let go. No, I won't say goodbye when all. So I sit and try to write this letter again. My tears heal the paper before my pain. Days pass like months. Can I talk to Gene Simmons for a few seconds? Is he is he there with you, Ken? Uh, yeah, I'm um, hold hold on a second. Okay, hey, Gene, Gene, telephone. All right, there we yes. go. There we go. <laughs> yes, they're either you can buy the Kiss condoms or the Kiss coffin. That way, we get you coming and going. <laughs> Very nice. So there you go. I need a drum kit in here for the. Boosh. I know you need the little <laughs> little red attack. <laughs> All right. Let me get my i my, my iPhone up, and we'll do. There you go. The do, you, do you have? Can you do that? Uh, I'd probably have to download it. Actually, there's a Kiss snare drum app you can buy for nine ninety nine. I tell you what, Gina, I'll you give me the address where to send my album to, and I'll download anything you want. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Gina. Very good. Very we have uh, good. Keith. Keith Simple is here, uh, Gene. A very. Uh, I know you. I know you enjoy another, another powerful and attractive man. Yes, I know you enjoy uh, discovering new talent, so um, you might want to check that out. Yes, definitely. I'd probably be more interested if he was a she, but that's <laughs> a whole other issue. Well, you know what? We can talk. We can talk. We can There's talk. always Very a way good. to make things work. <laughs> you have your people, call my people. <laughs> that sounds good. Collect them all. <laughs> That'll be nine ninety nine. I, I, I have the drum kit up now. You want to hear? Oh, he does. You got. You got to put. Hear, um, you got to put it right up to the mic, though. You got to put it right up to the mic. I, I could hear it. I could hear it. Oh, oh, can you hear it? No. There you go. Try that one. You know, there, there's just 11. there's just so much Kiss. Are you guys uh, Keith? Are you a Kiss fan? I'm a big Kiss fan. Yeah. Uh, Partine, are, are you familiar with the Kiss at all? A little bit. I'll a, a little bit. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. How about Danny Brown? Danny Brown, a Kiss fan over there? 
Uh, I've heard of him, but he's not, just heard not of a him. music fan. Okay. Well, there you go. You're not you're not Kiss geeks like me and Ken. But that's uh, right. Now, Keith, Keith, I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah. What is your perception as someone from the United Kingdom? What what is what are your thoughts on Kiss? Uh, well, you know, the song that won me over, and I, I don't actually think that the guys wrote it, unless I'm mistaken, but it was God Gave Rock and Roll to You. Yeah, they, they kind of rewrote it. Yeah, re-wrote originally, it, yeah. Uh, yeah they, they, they changed some of the words and a little bit of it, but yeah. Yeah, well, I was a big Bill and Ted fan of the movies. Oh, yeah, and that, absolutely. That, that was where I first sort of heard about them, and then my, my dad had a tape, and on it was uh, Crazy, Crazy Nights. Yeah, yeah, which was a, which and actually charted in the UK. Yes, it did, and I mean, as you know, obviously, it's a completely different world over there. But but for me, when I heard those two songs, there was something. You see, I I basically say I live my whole life by the Bill and Ted, um, you know, uh, way of living. You know, be like be excellent to each other. <laughs> okay, exactly. so that was kind of why it always reminds me of the good times with my brother and being you know being back and being a kid again. You know that kind of thing. So. Well, I'll tell you, brother, if we all lived by that, it'd be a much better world. Hey, I tell you what, if every if the world was full of musicians, it would be a peaceful place. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> of know? course, nobody would get up before one. <laughs> True. And True. lead singers would never carry anything, so <laughs> you know how it goes. Yeah, I did make Matt carry in my guitar, i got to admit. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> my okay. Now, let me ask you a question. That's okay. One of the influences of Kiss in both Cheap Trick was Slade. Oh, now, God, do you awesome. see any Slade uh, comparison between Kiss's music, like for example, something like Crazy Night and Rock and Roll Night with Slade? Do you see any any comparison with that? I definitely do. Um, what what blew my mind is that um, I didn't realize, you know, I'd never heard of Quiet Riot, you know. Exactly. And then yeah. I came over here, and I, I we opened up for them uh, a few years back. I think the singer passed away recently, a few years back. Yeah. Now, but but right before that happened, we opened up for them, and I was like, wait a minute, they're singing Slade songs. Are these Slade yeah. songs? Is this a Slade? Is this a <laughs> yeah. Slade tribute band? Yeah. And so I honestly thought it was a Slade tribute band because all I heard was, you know, a, come on, feel the noise. Oh, yeah. I was like, wait hey, a minute. you did that really well. Uh, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's what I get paid the big bucks for, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, there were a lot of a lot of great English bands from the seventies. Uh, Sweet and uh-huh. uh, Sweet, they had uh, you know the song "Love Is Like Oxygen," "Foxes yeah. on the Run." You know, I gotta ask, I gotta ask you a question, Ken. Did you did you hear? Did you ever know of the band called Thunder, the UK yeah. band? Yeah, that's my favorite British. Like, that's my probably in my top three biggest rock bands of all time as far as quality goes. I, I don't okay, know you... very good. And then what are the other two? Ah, uh, God, it's tough. Well, I mean, Kiss is up there, obviously, because obviously they have to be, right? Um, I would say probably Zeppelin as well, obviously, because it would be a sin not to say Zeppelin. Yeah. Okay, but, I'm going to um... ask you about the Beatles and Cheap Trick then. Okay. Well, what are, what are your thoughts on those two bands? Well, in my new band, I do a Beatles medley because I love them so much. Um, cheap... what, 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 what makes up the medley? Uh, well, it's kind of cheating because the, the start and end of the medley is actually Paul McCartney and Wings. It's, it's live and let die. Oh, wow. Um, but, I mean, I, we just love doing that stuff. And we're, we, we, um, we have all sorts of things, all the classics, you know, Hard Day's Night. Um, what else do we have? God, I'm, I'm or, drawing a or, blank. Or if you were in Monty Python, it would be a Hard Day's Knigget. Oh, <laughs> uh, he, yeah, he loves, he loves the Python. You know, you oh, know what's funny is uh, your other band, the, when I worked with you guys, the Seventh Heaven guys, they do Cheap Trick in your 30-minute in your thing. They do I Want You to Want Me. Yeah, we do. We do I Want You to Want Me. You know what we did for a while? Uh, was it Surrender? Surrender, Surrender. yeah. That Surrender. was a great song. Which actually that. mentions Kiss in it. See, it all comes Yes, to it all, everything. All Kiss records out. <laughs> Mama's all right. And now cheap trick, right. cheap, trick, cheap trick has to pay Gene Simmons every time they sing that song. There you go. Um, <laughs> Brother Man, you've got to get a recording of your Beatles medley and have Matt play it. I do. Yeah, I, I want to hear one, that. Actually. I was trying to get him to do you an acoustic. He was doing McCartney. He was doing He was doing McCartney in here, Ken. I got the guitar right He's now, ready. Man. Do it, man. Do it. When you were young and your heart was an open book, you used to say, live and let live. You know you did. Thank you. you. Know you did. <laughs> But in this ever-changing world in which we live in Makes you give in and cry You gotta get emotional, right? Yeah. Say, live and let die 
love the diminished chord in oh, there. That's my man. favorite. How about that, huh? That's that's what the, the hell? What chip. the hell? Why isn't this guy? Why isn't this guy on the charts? Hey, get this well, guy on the well, charts, goddamn it! Right now, yeah. Well, 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 to take a line from the original RoboCop, I'd buy that for a dollar, and that's not to diminish anything, but that is the price of a download. I certainly would download. Oh that. shit, yeah. Well, you know what? We'll have to pass you over the details because that's uh, I'm I'm all about promoting at the moment. <laughs> all right, Absolutely. just, just want to do a little. There's the monkeys, yeah. The Beatles, yeah. And Kiss. Who else? That, that's the, a, the Eagles are the other one. The Eagles, good. Very yeah, yeah, good. but the, the, do all many. of them sing in the Eagles? Yeah, they all took turns. You know, the, even the bass player did I a think, couple I of songs. Yeah, you're right. Timothy Gaines did sing. Yeah, yeah. yeah not Tim, right. Timothy Gaines is the bass player for Striper. I jumped. Timothy there. Schmidt is the Timothy guy you're thinking of. Timothy B. Schmidt is yeah. the bass player for the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, Very they had that same style. So it's, of, it's actually a pretty uh, limited company of. Bands that have all their their members sing. It's very rare. You know, I gotta tell you a story about that because cool. I'm from that next generation. You know, yeah. where we didn't experience vinyl or or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, it was basically just the end of the cassette era. Yeah, for me. right. You know, it was coming into CDs. But mm -hmm. tell you what, I did a session vocal for. Um, it was um, a dance version of. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Waiting for a Girl Like You by Foreigner. Yes. Oh, wow. And There's you know, a dance version of that? Yeah, it did really well in the Europe, European dance charts. But it was, um, the thing about it was, you know, my voice is that kind of style. So they yeah. asked me to come in and do it. And, and uh, I, what they did was they hired in all the same equipment that the actual band foreigner used yeah. when they recorded the track. Right. And I'm I'm looking at this stuff, you know, and I'm looking at the microphones and I'm looking at the amp and it was like, you know, it was like just the amp alone was about, you know, ten grand or whatever and it was just this big thing that was like full of tubes and and and, yeah. and, and, and you know and like sure. I was just like it, it looked like it was gonna go on fire at any yeah, point. Right. You know? But I'll tell you what, I recorded that song and I don't think my voice has ever sounded better really? than, you know, going through that old equipment just because, you know. Have you seen the movie Sound City with Dave Grohl? I just watched it. I Isn't that amazing? Excellent, yeah. excellent. Dark I'll tell you what. Let me just interrupt. You guys have to, if you didn't watch it, you have to watch it with headphones on. You cannot really appreciate that film until you've heard how great it sounds on, on your headphones. It's amazing. Oh, it's a production nerd's dream as well. Like oh, I'm absolutely. sitting there going, you know, they're talking about the positioning and the drums and all this stuff, and I'm yeah. listening and I'm going, oh, oh my word, oh yeah, I see what you mean. Like I mean, it was brilliant. But you know, the, the, just saying with that story, it's the same thing as that I realized as I listened back. I'm going, oh my goodness, like, and then they played, you know, the original track, and then they played mm -hmm. my track, right? And I was just, I, I didn't know there was, as you say, there's something about it that even you know, Mister, you know, um, modern technology over yeah. here, yeah appreciated even though i hadn't been in that generation you know it just well, felt right oh know? yeah there's there's thousands of audio files out there that will will buy nothing but vinyl and they'll spend i don't know ken what's the most money you've ever heard of someone spending on a, on a needle or an album needle hey ken uh, i've, I've but, got a good uh, i've got a good one for you when you're next doing right. your show see if you can get somebody to do that tongue twister see if they can say um you know cheap cheap talk and 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 uh, and trick, trick chat, chat. As fast as you can possibly that's, get it three times tough. in a row. That is not easy. That is not easy. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> I'd well, like well, to see that. One, 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 one time I said it's, it's the uh, title that the host can't even pronounce. So that was, <laughs> you know. It's a By the one. way, we, we also did a Beatles special, and we're going to be doing another one. So I'm going to put something out right now here. If you can get a copy of that Beatles medley, and you'd like to be on the show, I would love to have you on the Beatles special. Man, I have a copy right now. You could pull it up on YouTube right now. <laughs> All right. It's, a well, li it's us performing it that, live. That, send, that, send that to Matt, and I'll do what I need well, to do. If people want to see it, what's it, what's it, what's it called on YouTube? Uh, you could just type in Semple um, Beatles Medley. Semple, that's S-E-M-P-L-E. Okay, so type that in. Yeah, Simple Beatles medley, and it's us doing the live performance. We did it in a closed session with just us, but we recorded the whole thing. Now, Ken, before I forget to say, I, I want to say, um, have you ever heard of an English band, uh, Keith, called The Move? I've heard of The oh, Move. Yeah. They, they eventually became ELO. It started, oh, yeah, It was of Jeff Lynne and Bev Bevan and uh, Roy Wood. Roy Wood. But 
And I gotta, uh, we gotta talk a little bit more to Keith over here about his new All record. Right. And we have to give away some records. And uh, Ken, we're gonna give you for being a guest. We're going to send you one of uh, Keith's brand new CDs that just came out this week. How do you feel about that? I'm excited. I'm very excited. Thank you so much. You gonna autograph it? Oh, you dead right. I will, and I'll definitely take you up on that offer. So, we'll we'll do Beatles any you know a hundred times a, a Well, I, I would minute. love to have you on the Beatles show. <laughs> awesome, so. man. I appreciate that. Ken, uh, s- uh, send me over on Facebook, uh, me- uh, private message me your address, and we'll get that out to you uh, this week. And and a and a rather zesty picture of me as well. <laughs> zesty, zesty, yeah. So. zesty, yeah. The great Ken Mills, host of podcast and cheap, oh behave, cheap cheap talk. Chat With something. Chat. Yeah, yes. I'm sorry, man. I'll get it straight. Thank you for calling in, Ken. Have a good night, okay, buddy? All right. God bless. Be good. To, be excellent to one another. Be All right, excellent man. to one another. Thanks, dudes. man. All right. Bye. Bye. Right, bye. Bye. Okay. So anyway, uh, Keith, any plugs? Do it now. Get, this is plug time. Uh, plug time. I would just say go to simplemusic.com. Get a copy of the album there. You can go to iTunes forward slash simple. You can go to Reverb Nation's a good one now because we've just updated everything on there. It's just sem- a forward slash simple. Okay. And, uh, you know, the website's there, Simple Music, so you can check out where we're going to be playing mm-hmm. uh, over the next few weeks and months. Okay. Uh, check us out in the summer. Remember, there's a lot of all-age shows, so a lot of the family and friends and everybody can come out to them as well. So. And uh, all your fans from 7th Heaven are still see you guys playing around? Of course, yeah. We'll be at Rivers Casino, actually, tomorrow night. Um, Very cool. And it's always a good time there. we got a couple of 7th Heaven shows this week. In fact, it's all casinos this week, I think. It's Harris Casino. It's, uh, it's uh, Hollywood Casino. It's, it's a whole bunch of shows this week. So um, fun times. Hardest working band in Chicago, 7th uh, Heaven and Keith Semple. Check out uh, Semple on, on the Internet. And plug time for uh, my buddy Parti over here. Parti, we didn't forget about you. And uh, now we're gonna we're gonna play uh, one of your songs on uh, on the internet, uh, Keith. What what song would you or do you want to or do you want to do acoustic? Oh, I, I I don't really mind whatever you feel. Like. <laughs> what are, whatever you're up I, for. I, I think it seems like we got to play a rock song at this point. Because are, you, am you, I allowed to do a cover? Yes, do whatever you want. It just feels right after the end of all the talk we've been doing. Right? Yes, do it, do you it, know? man. All right, you want me to? Yes, right. let let it rock. It's all the same. Only the names will change. Every day It seems we're wasted away Another place Where the faces are so cold I drive all night Just to get back home And I'm a cowboy On a steel horse I ride And I'm wanted You can sing it if you like <laughs> Did all rely on it. Did all rely. Let's do it. Sometimes I sleep. Sometimes it's not for days. The people I meet always go the separate way. Sometimes you tell the day by the bottle that you drink In times when you're alone and all you do is think And I'm a cowboy on a steel horse I ride And I'm wanted, wanted, it all alive I've been everywhere, oh yeah, and I'm standing 
standing tall I've seen a million faces And I'll rock them all One more time And I'm a cowboy On a steel horse I ride And I'm wanted Wanted Did all the Did all the Did all the Jesus Christmas. Absolutely you know, fantastic. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what. You, you, you should not be on America's Got Talent because you have too much talent. That's my, <laughs> yeah. that's my whole thing right there. With Keith's, <laughs> give it up for Keith Semple, everybody, out there in Radio Land. Uh, oh, yes. Hercules. We, we, we got we to do the plugs here. We want to uh, give a shout out to uh, Party Limousine Services, which is on Facebook. And of course, I want to uh, thank our good friend here for providing with providing us with some 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 excellent songs and entertainment. Um, our new good friend Keith Semple and uh, his band Semple. Thank you. Very and much. Uh, and also, he's uh, one of the one of the great singers for the for the uh, for the band Seventh Heaven, and which is a Chicago favorite. So uh, everybody, go check those guys out on the internet. And uh, I want to thank my good friend Danny Brown for taking care of the boards over there. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny. You're welcome. All right, man. And uh, everybody, drive safe out there, and uh, we'll see you very soon. This is Matt Cassane signing off. We'll see you next time. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.